Now let's consider the momentum for a system of objects. Probably the best way to understand this is to consider an example. Let's think about a swarm of flies. A swarm of flies is composed of many objects, all of which are moving. And um, if we look at the swarm, and the swarm appears to be staying in one place in space and not not moving in itself, we could say that the swarm has a momentum of zero. It's the velocity of that swarm is nothing. The swarm isn't moving. But we can look at each of the independent flies in the swarm and we can see that they're all moving. So in a sense what we're seeing is the momentum of a system which is the addition of the momenta of a bunch of individual objects, in this case flies, and each of the flies, for example, has its own mass, has its own velocity, and we add all of these up, and when we do, we get the momentum of the system. And in this case, with the swarm not moving, the momentum of the system is zero. If, on the other hand, the swarm is moving towards you, the momentum of the swarm is not zero, but you know, at any given moment, some of the flies may be moving faster towards you, others may be moving away from you, um, or in other directions, but when it's all added up, what you see is that the motion of the swarm it has a, a certain momentum. Uh, and so that's what we mean by the momentum of a system. How does a group of objects move, and in fact, how difficult is it to stop? Uh, a group of objects, a system of objects. So you can imagine that, um, you know, for example, gravel uh, coming down a hill in a, in a landslide. There is a total momentum for that system. Uh, if you were to get hit by one pebble, it would be a certain amount of uh, force your body applies to stop that one pebble. But if it's an entire landslide made up, made up of many, many pebbles, the what you would experience would be a great deal worse. Uh, you'd have to stop or, or, you'd, or you'd be overcome by potentially momentum of many, many more objects. So you say, well, let's look at the momentum of the system, the momentum of that landslide, and that's going to be made up of the sum of the momenta of each of the um, pebbles and rocks in that landslide. So one thing to to remember is that when you're working out the momentum, remember some of the objects can be moving in different directions, and so in order to find the momentum of the system, you have to add up the individual momenta as vectors. You have to take into account the direction that each one's going as well as its speed and mass. Here's how you can calculate the momentum of a system of objects moving in one dimension. In order to determine the total momentum of a system, we need to first consider which way is positive. Um, in the case of the football players in the picture on the right, you can see that the player in predominantly white is moving to the right. We've assigned positive to that motion. and so. The momentum of that player will be positive. The opposite direction will be considered as negative, and in this case, the player in red, and will assign a negative value to the momentum in that direction. So you may have multiple objects. For all those that have positives that are moving to the right, give them positive values. All those moving to the left, you give negative values and then simply add all of those up to get the total momentum for the system. Here's an example. Determine the momentum of a system of two objects, one with a mass of 6 kilograms and a velocity of 13 meters per second towards the east, and a second one with a mass of 14 kilograms and a velocity of 7 meters per second to the west. So, just remember that if we look at a map, we usually see east to the right and west to the left. 
and we often also if we look at number lines we have negative to the left and positive to the right so that's why we'll take that as our convention so uh, listed here are all the values that we've gleaned from the problem in terms of masses and velocities and we know that the momentum of a system is simply the sum of the momenta of the objects in this case object 1 and object 2 the momentum itself is mass times velocity so the momentum of the system is mass 1 times v1 its, its velocity plus mass 2 times velocity 2 so let's just substitute the numbers in here I'm going to leave out the units just to make it easy for me to write um, but I will put them in right at the end and I'll put the numbers for mass and velocity separately in parentheses so we can keep track of those so mass 1 is 6 kilograms and its velocity is 13 meters per second and in the other case we have a mass of 14 kilograms and a velocity of negative 7 meters per second so what we have is 6 times 13 which is 78 and 14 times negative 7 which is negative 98 so the answer is going to be negative 20 kilogram meters per second so it's important here is notice the sign in this case the object moving to the west although moving slower uh, had a much larger mass and hence a much larger momentum than the one moving to the east and hence we get that result negative 20 kilogram meters per second